I recently embarked on a challenge to go 55 days without waste as part of the World Wildlife Fund Challenge 55 and that's to help save the last 55 Maui dolphins as many of you will know. I cannot believe how difficult I found this challenge to be honest. It was a lot more difficult than I had expected and in some ways it proved almost impossible to go completely waste free and I think that says a lot about how deeply embedded wastage is within our current society and culture. Through this process I've learned that personal waste doesn't seem substantial until you actually start paying attention to it. I think a lot of us are on automatic pilot a lot of the time and we just sort of throw things in the bin throughout the day. It's not until you actually collect that waste and look at it as a whole that it becomes really confronting. For instance, on average night I might make a meal like burritos using common ingredients like this which a lot of them are packaged. That's a whole bag of rubbish for one meal. And the statistics help to reiterate how huge of an issue this is showing that the average person produces about 2 kgs of waste per day, which is 14 kgs per week and 700 kgs per year, which is so many times my body weight and such an unsustainable footprint to be having. And in America alone, over 200 million tonnes of waste, household waste, is produced each year. And that's just huge, it's sort of unfathomable. Most of this waste goes into landfills where it slowly decomposes and actually a lot of the waste takes over 100 years to decompose which is a huge amount of time. And in that time it's producing greenhouse gases like crazy, especially methane, which is particularly bad. And it's also exposed to environmental factors which can cause the waste to be leaked out into different ecosystems and cause harm to wildlife as well. I think the biggest problem with how our society functions at the moment is the huge disconnect there seems to be for so many of us between our actions and the wider consequences of those actions. When it comes to trash, we think as far as putting the trash out and it being emptied, but then it's out of our hands, you know, we don't think beyond that. And that's a problem because the waste continues to exist and it continues to have impacts and we produced it so we continue to be responsible for that. And I know I'm a huge advocate for the saying, be the change you want to see, but it is so applicable. I think it's a fundamentally fulfilling part of human nature to think that your external impacts were positive in your life rather than negative. And being conscious of your waste is such a great place to start. It gets you thinking about your whole footprint on this planet. You start seeing a huge difference between a grocery store and a farmer's market. You know, farmer's markets are largely unpackaged, they're local, they're organic. You start appreciating all of those factors. So I hope this video is going to be useful for some of you in sharing tips and insights that I've gained through this process of going wasteless. So the one biggest insight for reducing waste is to reduce consumption. And it seems like a really obvious one, but I think a lot of the time we get caught up in this consumeristic cycle and just buy so much more than we need to. Companies are particularly good at selling us things that we don't need. And because we're buying all of the stuff that we don't need, we end up wasting so much more than we need to. And that's a real problem. So a great way to get around that and reduce consumption is to buy quality over quantity. To not go into a store and there's a sale on and just buy everything because it's cheap. Because that stuff won't last that long anyway. But to choose something that you really want and to buy it good quality to invest that little bit more initially and it will last a lot longer and you'll value it a lot more. And then another great thing is to make things yourself at home and I probably say this too much in my videos but there are so many wonderful benefits that come from it. I think it puts you in touch with the process is probably the biggest thing. So you really value the products that are being created and you value and understand how many resources go into creating things and that makes you less inclined to go out and buy all of this stuff because you appreciate it more and there's more value in it, you know. You don't just want to buy stuff and throw stuff out. So many resources went into creating that. And so when you make it at home for yourself, you use it all up, you appreciate it, it's really great. And you also have control over what goes into it. You can make your own skincare and cosmetics and hair care and home products and you can also make your own food. And that's really awesome because some products you buy are so heavily packaged. Muesli bars is a really good example of that. If you buy muesli bars, you know, they're in a box and then they've got packaging and more packaging. So it's great when you make them yourself and you can put them into reusable containers or sustainable packaging. So consuming less is quite an easy and significant way to waste less. And then the next big thing is being aware of food waste. Food waste is the biggest wastage issue that we face. We waste so much food that it could feed everyone in the world. And that's a huge moral issue because there are so many people starving to death while we throw out perfectly good food. It's also a huge environmental issue because so many tons of food waste goes into landfills. It produces billions of tons of greenhouse gases. It's a huge contributor to climate change. And that's a real shame when you consider how many resources went into producing that food in the first place, you know, how much land was deforested, how much water 
and fossil fuels went into producing it. It's crazy and it's something that we should be working on so much more than we are. It's a huge global issue. So to reduce food wastage, obviously using all the food that we buy is really important. And I had a lot of great insights with this through the Wasteless Challenge. So one thing I learned was looking in the fridge before I go to the grocery store to make something for dinner is really great because when you look in the fridge you see things that might be going off soon that need to be used up and that can help shape what you decide to make for dinner. Also writing a really good list before you go to the grocery store so that you don't end up buying a bunch of stuff that you didn't necessarily need and some of it will end up getting wasted. Next is recognising that best before dates are just best before dates, not must use before dates and a lot of the time products are perfectly good, perfectly safe for quite a long time beyond their best before dates so don't feel compelled to throw things out right away. You can google them to see if this product is one that will last longer or if it's something that really should only last a day or two beyond its best before date. Another great thing is to use your leftovers, I tend to put them in the fridge and have them for lunch or dinner the next day. You can put them in the freezer if you're not going to use them right away or if you have things like leftover rice you can make fried rice or get inventive, there are lots of different things. If you google ideas for how to use your leftovers you'll probably come up with something great. And then food scraps is a big one because people tend to think food scraps are just waste and throw them out. But there are so many ways that you can use them. You can eat the skins of most things, uh, you don't need to throw them out especially if they're organic. You can give food scraps to certain pets, so if you've got chickens or pigs in particular they can eat a lot of food scraps. Um, you can also compost food scraps and that makes a wonderful fertiliser. But cashew buckets are a particularly good composting system that you can use. And you just put your food scraps in there once a day and they go under the kitchen sink and then it creates a wonderful fertiliser that you can use for your plants. Composting is an awesome option and research actually suggests that about two thirds of household waste is compostable so it could completely avoid landfills if you did compost it. And then also you can use food scraps to make things like stocks, you can just boil them up in some water, some vegetable scraps and make a veggie stock and then you can just freeze that until you use it. I love using veggie stocks and rice and things, it just makes it so much more flavourful. And so other than using everything that we buy, another thing is to challenge the system and that's because a huge amount of food waste is a product of the system, not of individual choice. Grocery stores have ridiculously high regulations on the food that they accept and that means a huge amount of food wastage is happening. Producers are having to throw out so much of their produce um, just because of these ridiculous regulations. So what you can do is you can seek out places that sell seconds and it will be cheaper but it means that food's not going to waste. You can deliberately choose ugly fruits and vegetables because those ones are probably the ones that are going to go to waste. Uh, you can also go to local farmers markets and support local producers directly rather than through a grocery store because this is something that needs to be changed. It's just so ridiculous and it just causes so much unethical wastage. So then the next big way to waste less is to generally produce less garbage and there are so many ways to do that. There are obvious things like taking a reusable bag to the grocery store rather than using plastic bags. Taking your own cutlery with you when you're going out places rather than getting disposable cutlery. Using handkerchiefs rather than tissues. Using reusable water bottles rather than purchasing plastic bottles is so huge. I can't even understand how people buy so many plastic bottles, but 50 billion plastic bottles are purchased in the US each year. Such a huge amount of waste. Using a metal tea strainer and loose leaf tea rather than tea bags. Taking reusable coffee cups into the coffee store. There are lots of awesome options for these out there now. And they're kind of life-saving if you want to go without waste because <laughs> it's so easy to use so many disposable coffee cups. And if you talk to any cafe owner, they will say so much waste is produced every day due to their disposable coffee cups. So reusable cups are awesome and some places even give you a discount if you use them. Using a face cloth rather than face wipes or cotton pads. Reusing the snap lock bags you get at the pick and mix at the grocery store. You can just write the number really small in the top corner and then cross it out once you've finished using it, take it back the next time and write a new number on. And that way you can use it about 10 times or you can write the number into your phone and then you can just take it up to the checkout and put it through with that number and next time you can just continue using it over and over endlessly and that's a great way to not have to waste those bags. Buying loose produce rather than stuff that is pre-packaged. And then putting it into your basket straight away rather than putting it into plastic bags because you don't really need those plastic bags. Those are great ways to avoid excess packaging. Also, if things are only packaged at the grocery store, you can go down to the farmer's market and you'll probably find them unpackaged there. Using containers in the fridge rather than cling wrap. You can use containers over and over and over but cling wrap has one use and then it gets thrown out. Buying jars rather than cans because jars are so much more recyclable 
and you can use them yourself without even needing to take them to the recycling centre. There are lots of different things you can put in jars. Eating out at the place rather than getting takeaways and that's because you're served with a plate and real cutlery rather than a bunch of disposable packaging. Avoid using paper towels by using cloths and hand towels around the kitchen. Buying in bulk is a great option because you get a lot of product for a smaller amount of packaging as compared to things that are individually packaged or small portion sizes that are packaged. In some places you can go to which have bulk bins you can use jars, just weigh the jar first and fill it up and weigh it afterwards and pay like that and you don't need packaging at all which is great. If you need to buy online for anything try and combine your orders so that you maximise the use of that packaging. Whenever I buy on iHerb I would never just buy one or two items, I always buy 10 things at a time, anything that I could possibly need and double ups on things that I'm going to need so that I maximise the use of that packaging because it's somewhat unavoidable to get some packaging when you do buy things online. Buying second hand is a great option because it's recycling and it doesn't feed into the same issues of consumerism and it also avoids excess tags and packaging. And if you can't avoid packaging, the best thing to do is just recycle it. So put it into the appropriate recycling bins, repurpose it if you can, especially jars, that's a great way to avoid wasting them, and choosing things that have got recyclable packaging. So those are the insights that I gained for living without waste and I hope that they're useful. I've also learnt that living with reduced waste at least doesn't need to be a big burden. My mum is a really good example of that, someone who wastes very little when she has a very sustainable lifestyle and it's just a wonderful life. She might seem a bit extreme to some people but it depends on your point of reference and I think she's a really great role model. She grows most of her own stuff, she produces preserves and dries things, she picks the pumpkin seeds out of pumpkins and dries them so she can use them in her muesli. She recycles different things, buys things from secondhand stores and turns them into new things that she can sell at the market and I think the best example about her lifestyle is that she really values everything and nothing is seen as something that's worthless, that should just be thrown out. Everything has value. So waste is such a huge, huge issue and it's such an unnecessary and avoidable issue and for it to change we need to be a part of that change. So I hope that this video inspires you to help be a part of the change.